Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Layla and this is where we talk about personal, educational, and professional development. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about education abroad and today's video is going to be in collaboration with the founder of Classy Entrepreneurs, Shule. So in today's video, Shule and I are going to answer some of the frequently asked questions regarding education abroad and we are going to try and bring in our own insight and our own perspectives into this broad topic. If education abroad is an area of interest to you, then this video is definitely going to be for you. Before we get started on the video, I wanted to introduce Shule a little bit. So Shule is a young entrepreneur living in Europe. She graduated from a University of Economics where she studied finance and accounting. She currently has her own tech platform where she helps starting and aspiring entrepreneurs create their own online businesses. Hello people, my name is Shule and I'm from Bulgaria and as you know from my friend Leila, we are going to talk about studying abroad and education at all. I have a bachelor's degree in finance and I've graduated in May 2020 from the best university for economics. But lately I realized that I'm not really happy with my choice because the high school that I've studied in actually educates students who are going to Ivy League universities in America but I had a lack of information about studying abroad and I was thinking that it's not for me. But first, let me share with you my general opinion about the education system. Do you really need any degree to be successful? This is the first question that you have to answer honestly. And what does success mean to you? If your goal is to be wealthy and to create your own fortune, then definitely having a diploma, having a degree is not from the first necessity, especially nowadays. It will help you, but it is not a factor for sure. But let's say that your goal is to be the best cardiac surgeon in the world and you cannot do it without a degree. So you have to be extremely honest to yourself. What do you really want from this life? And I guess that most people who are watching this channel are entrepreneurs, wannapreneurs, or they're just interested in entrepreneurship. And life is not all unicorns and rainbows. I mean, you can definitely create your empire without a degree, but personally, I think that the worst time to start a business is when you're desperate. And I think that having a degree will be a backup plan for you and it will let you to sleep calmly at the night. Lots of people give as examples Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs and other people who created their own success without a degree. We're just listening to the same success stories and no one is talking about people who risked everything and they failed. They left the university, they used all their money to start to create a business and they just failed and gone bankrupt. Is there any other Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs? I mean, they were able to get to the best universities in the world. Do you really think that you have the same potential and you can actually do the things that they've already done? And I'm not saying that you don't have a potential maybe you're even better than them you're the only person who knows your own potential but having a degree is a good thing it is your plan b and in conclusion my opinion is that even your dream can be accomplished without a degree it is a good thing to have it it will definitely release the stress level and you will be making a better decision for your own business the six questions that Shuli and I are going to be answering in this video are going to be how to decide if education abroad is for you, how to decide when and where to study, how to find study abroad programs, how to build a support system, how to budget for study abroad, and how to pick your university and your major. 
All right, so these are gonna be the questions that we will be answering together with Shuley. She's going to bring in her own insights and perspectives on these questions, and I will be bringing in my own. All right, so the first question that we will be answering in today's video is how to decide if studying abroad is for you. I've done a lot of independent research regarding this question, and I've come across certain percentages, which I won't really be mentioning today, but what I can say is that a significant majority of students that want to study abroad do that for the purpose of experiencing another country and culture. Another vast majority of students that want to study abroad do that for the sake of traveling. And the third large group of students that want to study abroad do that in a pursuit of personal growth. So deciding on whether or not education abroad is for you requires a lot of dedicated research, a lot of honest self-assessment, but also a lot of thoughtful planning. Deciding on whether or not you want to study abroad is also going to play a huge role in your future as a professional and, and as an individual. I've come across some quizzes that you can take to decide on whether or not it's for you. I'm gonna show you guys one of these quizzes and by taking this quiz, you can come at a result that lets you know whether or not it's the right thing for you. So for example, the first question is, do you like to travel? Because education abroad requires a lot of traveling, if you're someone that hates the airports, hates the buses, and hates the trains, and airplane flights, and airport transfers, and all of that, then education abroad is going to be a stressful experience for you. Uh, to me personally, I do like traveling, so I'm gonna choose I love it, click OK, and the next question is, why do you wanna study abroad? And this question really measures how much of this decision is influenced by others and what percentage of that decision is influenced by your personal inner values, decisions, and goals. For example, you could choose others told me it's a great thing to do, or you could choose to build my resume, or you could choose to see more of the world and gain perspective on things. That's what I would choose. Another question that comes up on this quiz is, do you have any hesitations about traveling abroad? And I think that this is a great question because a lot of us romanticize education abroad because we think of it as an exciting opportunity that is going to be life-changing and it's going to be fun. I'm not saying that's not true, but on the other hand, education abroad can be a stressful transition process. It can be stressful to get used to a new environment, to get used to a new language, a new culture, new everything. And what I would recommend before you commit to a serious plan, I would definitely recommend joining an international academic environment from your country and that obviously means joining a virtual class or a virtual course online being part of an international classroom environment online being in a classroom with international professors online before you commit to doing this on a full-blown scale so this would be my perspective on education abroad and i am now going to hand it over to shule i really want to listen to her insights on how to decide whether or not studying abroad is for you so how to decide if studying abroad is for you if you think that you already achieved the best that you can in the country that you live in when it comes to education and you really think that studying abroad will give you more credibility and it will put you a step ahead of your competitors then go ahead but i would make sure that the university that i want to study in is much better than all the universities in my country because at the end of the day you are spending more money than you would if you study in your own country and what is the point to study in a university that won't give you more credibility and it won't put you a step ahead of your competitors also are you ready to handle things by yourself maybe you live alone but maybe you live with your parents i want to tell you that you need to be ready to become a housewife and to take a really big responsibility you are all alone especially if you don't have any friends to accompany you you're starting from the scratch 
You need to be honest with yourself if you can really handle this. Are you ready to sacrifice your comfort? And if you don't have that amount of money to invest in studying abroad, make sure that you can really pay the students long. Make sure that you're answering honestly to those questions and you will understand if you want to, if it is for you to study abroad or not. All right, so we're now back to answer the next question. And the next question is how to decide where and when to study. Now, this question is really, really broad. I get this question a lot across all of my social media platforms. I feel like education abroad is something that does require a lot of committed research, but it also requires you understanding what your priorities are, what your desires are, and what your goals are. In terms of deciding where to study, I would definitely recommend considering the college the city and the country that that college is located in. Oftentimes we can be carried away by the reputation of the college and the university, by the major that that college offers. But I think that the, your entire study abroad experience is going to be strongly affected by the geographic location that it is in. For example, if you are a student in Switzerland, you are going to be able to, to get a job outside of your college where you can be paid the minimum wage and you can work legally for up to 20 hours per week. On the other hand, if you are an international student in the US on an F1 visa, the only place that can hire you legally is your college so you aren't really allowed to take any of the outside jobs during your studies yes you can definitely do a cpt visa in between your semesters you can't really work anywhere else outside or of your college during your studies. This is something that I highly, highly recommend considering before you commit to a college. Another thing that I recommend considering is really paying attention to the accessibility of the city that you're gonna be in. And by this, what I'm really trying to say is, for example, I personally chose to study in La Roche in Switzerland, and I was totally carried away by the idea of going to a hospitality school in Switzerland, and I disregarded the fact that that college was located in a little village which was stranded in the middle of nowhere in the Swiss Alps and my entire college experience was limited to being stuck in that city you know unless I had a car and a lot of time to commute to a lot of different places but yeah a lot of my student experience in Switzerland was defined by that little village which was located literally in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, this is something that you should probably consider. It's very, very important. And obviously another thing to consider is this the country that you're choosing alongside with that college. You want to make sure that the location that you're choosing is the type of a place that's gonna give some type of benefits to international students. Some of the countries are very, very ruthless they'll take all of your money you'll go to that college you'll invest in to education in, in that country but upon graduation they're not going to allow you to stay in that country and to work or they're not going to assist you in finding internships jobs and really jumping into your career canada is great in terms of that i have a lot of friends that studied in canada graduated from colleges in canada and were able to get jobs to transition onto a work visa and to eventually pursue um, the Canadian green card. And when it comes to when, I get a lot of uh, comments on YouTube from my viewers along the lines of, I'm 30 years old, I'm 35, you know, I feel like I'm way too late to pursue my education. I, I don't think I'll be eligible for any programs or scholarships or things like that. And I think that there's a lot of stigma in my culture around getting your education a little bit later in life or, or for example, taking a longer break between your bachelor's and master or taking a gap year after high school and exploring yourself as a person, exploring the world and trying to understand what it is that you wanna pursue in life. Um, there's a lot of stigma around that. You're kind of expected to, to know everything right after high school. You have to know what you want and there's a lot of 
peer pressure. There's a lot of pressure that's being put on us by our parents. What I like about the United States is how open-minded the educational culture here is. You could be in a classroom with a group of students that are from all different stages of life. And I think that's great. That's beautiful. The diversity that the educational environment here offers. So yeah, when is definitely up to you. All right. These are my insights in terms of a when and where. And I am now going to hand it over to Shule and listen to her insights to decide when and where to study abroad. As I've already mentioned, make sure that you're going to a better place. It must deserve your money, your effort and your time as well. The most important thing that you have to be focusing on is the profit that you're going to make from your investment. I mean that there is no point to put money, effort and time in something that won't give you a great return on investment. I want to know that the second that I've graduated from the uh, university, I will have my dream job and I will have a really good salary that will help me to pay my students loan. Are you sure that the university that you're choosing can provide you this? Have to decide where. You know that education system is a huge business model. Universities are interested to get your money. And that's why I will choose the best university in my industry. Let's say that you want to study law, then you definitely have to go to the Stanford University. Because once you graduate from there, you won't be trying to get a job. Jobs will try to get you. For me, this is the real definition of education. And education is not the only thing that you have to pay attention to. I think that it is more important to create a really good and strong network. Because imagine all the people who are going to Stanford and other Ivy League universities in America. I mean, not only in America. Oxford, Stanford, Harvard, etc. Those universities are actually choosing the future leaders, which means that all those people or most of them will be really successful and you know what they say you're the average of five people that you spend the more time with so in conclusion i really think that having a good network is much more important than the education itself when to study abroad as you already know college takes lots of time money and effort as well and i think that in more countries getting your bachelor's degree takes much more time than getting your master's degree. So that's why I will choose to study to get my bachelor's degree in my country where I will be spending less money or I will choose a country which doesn't have so expensive fees. I've already told you that I've studied finance for four years and now imagine that going to America to study finance for four years. My advice to you is to get your bachelor's degree in your country or in a country, country where fees are much cheaper and you can consider getting your master's degree in a more developed country like the USA, UK, etc. Because you know that when you're starting your bachelor's degree, you are very young. I guess that you're very young and you don't actually know, or maybe you do, but probably, I guess so, that you don't even know what you really want from the life. You cannot give up so easily or to say, I don't want to study this anymore because you've already spent lots of money in your bachelor's degree. But when it comes to your master's degree, you already know what you really want from life and you know that it will help you to get to a better place in your careers. So in conclusion, my opinion is that you don't have to spend so much money in your bachelor's degree, but you can definitely sp spend lots of money in your master's degree. All right, so the third question that we're gonna be answering with you guys today is how to find study abroad programs. The answers to this question are going to be very time sensitive. Some of the scholarship that I might be mentioning right now might not be available in six months or one year from now. Therefore, it is very, very important during your entire process of researching and 
looking for opportunities, to be in the market of scholarships and opportunities, and to be up to date with everything, to subscribe to newsletters, to work with educational agencies, to work with professionals, to contact the admissions departments of the universities. Another great way to search for scholarships and active programs is being a member on Facebook groups that constantly post about these scholarships. That is a great network to be part of because that's where you could also find like-minded people or people that are on the same path with, with you or mentors that have already been through, through the things that you're planning to go through. Another thing that I wanted to mention here is I have a small but a very international audience on this channel and some of us are from underdeveloped or developing countries seeking educational opportunities in developed countries. And a lot of the times we might think that being from a developing or an underdeveloped country is a disadvantage. On the contrary, being from an underdeveloped or a developing country is a huge advantage on your application when applying to colleges in developed countries. Therefore, wherever you live in the world, it is very, very important for you to be up to date with the scholarship programs that are offered on a national level by your Ministry of Education. You want to make sure you stay up to date. You want to make sure you network with the professionals that work in the Ministry of Education. You're on that website because there are certain types of scholarships that are only going to be available to the nationals of that specific country. Stay up to date with those and do not underestimate the power of being from an underdeveloped or a developing country. How to find study abroad programs? Actually, I remember that when I was in high school, there were institutions about those things. They are providing information about the documentation that you will need, the tests that you have to take, and all the requirements that the universities have. But just because I was not really interested in studying abroad, I didn't pay attention to them. What you can do right now is actually to Google it. Also, you can check the site of the university, their website, to see what kind of requirements they have. Or you can just join a Facebook group, there are lots of them, and ask someone who has the same goal like you. Or you can just use the power of the internet and connect with someone who is already studying in the university or in the country that you want to go and if you're interested in studying in bulgaria don't hesitate to text me i will try my best to help you number four how to build a support system i wanted to touch base on a very sensitive topic here for a lot of the people in the world education abroad is simply a matter of making a decision of applying getting in and pursuing that opportunity for a lot of the other people in the world, for example, for a lot of the women from my culture, education abroad is not an easily accessible privilege. A lot of the women from my culture are oppressed, deprived of educational opportunities. They're deprived of their basic freedom to pursue education simply because they're women. Over the last few years, there has obviously been a lot of prog progress, but just because it's not happening to you, it doesn't mean it's not happening to other people. This is something that's very close to my heart, and I always want to bring these topics up to really make sure that we acknowledge the fact that some people simply don't have a support system. You wanna make sure you create that support system for yourself. Whether that means picking up multiple jobs while your applications are pending and saving more than 30% of your income for your study abroad plans, whether that means building that support system outside of your family, finding friends and like-minded people that will guide you in the right direction, do that. I strongly encourage everyone, especially girls from my culture, not to get discouraged by family members that don't support their education. There is absolutely no shame in pursuing your education and pursuing that wherever it is that you want in the world. It is your basic human right. Education should not be a privilege. It should be a basic human right. Do make that decision for yourself. Build that support system for yourself and definitely seek support outside of your family. During this whole entire process, I also do strongly recommend consulting uh, educational agencies, consulting professionals, networking with mentors, 
meaning students that have already gone through that path and most importantly working on your mental health working with a mental health professional to ensure that you are not compromising on yourself, on your health as a human while building that support system because we can sometimes you know, compromise our health and happiness in the name of certain goals, but just do make sure that happiness and success go hand in hand, whatever you do in life. Let's listen to Shule's insights on this topic and then we'll be right back to answer the next question to create a supporting system it is really important to have a supporting system it is really important to have people who are actually supporting you and but let's say that you don't have let's say that your parents are not supporting you and it is really stressful and it is really big responsibility actually to walk against other people's expectations especially when those people are your own parents i will advise you to surround yourself with people who are on the same path like you people who have the same goal because one moment that you doubt yourself you're losing everything because everyone you know is pushing you everyone is telling you that this is not right maybe there is no one in your family who studied abroad or you don't have any friend around you who will tell you that it is something good they're giving you you know negative advices or things that you actually don't want to hear then make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who will be supporting you and use the power of internet just connect with people who are studying abroad or they want to study abroad and you will see that actually you're somehow you know creating your own audience you're creating your own group and this is how actually you will be feeling more motivated and etc so guys that was everything that i wanted to share with you hope that you enjoyed it and if you have any questions about the universities in bulgaria or studying in bulgaria let me know i will try my best to answer your questions have a nice day all right so number five is how to budget for study abroad. When it comes to studying abroad, I think that budgeting is going to involve your tuition fees, your accommodation fees, your food, and some other personal expenses. If you find a scholarship that covers your tuition fee, accommodation, food, and personal expenses are something that can be managed depending on where you live. Obviously, if you live in New York, it might be very expensive, but if you live somewhere in a little town in Switzerland, it is possible to find cheap accommodation, cheap food, and a cheap version of everything. You just need to look for those affordable resources. So for example, I do remember paying only $375 for my room um, during my fourth semester in Switzerland. You have to budget for studying abroad. If you want to study in Bulgaria, let me give you a little bad news that universities here are not providing financial aid and I think that they're not giving students loan. But semesters are here are extremely cheap and also you can start working part-time and they almost all universities have hostels and actually you can afford them. Also, you can start a part-time job, as I've already told you. And in the summer, you can stay in Bulgaria and you can work as a receptionist, animator, or you can work in a hotel at all. They will be paying your rent, your food and everything, and you will just keep your money to yourself. You can just check the website of the university. It doesn't matter if you're going to study in Bulgaria or, or in another country. Just make sure that the university is providing some kind of, you know, backup plan for you if you don't have the finances actually to afford the university. And what I can tell you about Bulgaria is that there are great opportunities to work part-time or to work in the summer or to work in Bulgaria at all. One of the best sites that I'm using to find jobs in Bulgaria is jobs.bg. 
All right, and the last question is how to pick your university and major. I personally think that before you pick your university and your major, you want to decide on what you want to do with your life after college. Say you want to work for a big four consulting firm. Contact the big four consulting firm, contact the people that work at that firm and ask them what they have studied, ask them what their educational background is. That is going to help you clear some of the questions that are in your head and pursue a more specific path. On the other hand, I definitely recommend going to college that offers all different types of majors so that you can transfer from one major into another within one college without having to start this process all over again. For example, I went to a hospitality school in Switzerland. The only thing, the only major that my college offered was hospitality. So if I wanted to change my mind and transfer from hospitality into finance, I would have to start my entire education abroad experience from scratch. Another thing that I wanna offer you is doing a quiz. There is this very interesting quiz that matches your major to the type of personality that you have. I will link it down below for you guys. Most importantly, when it comes to picking the right major in the right university, I think that the most important thing is understanding what your priorities are, what your values are, and what your abilities are. It's really doubling down on those, but also taking into consideration what your weaknesses are. Because at the end of the day, you are investing into that college and into that university to add value onto what you already have and to improve yourself as a professional and as an individual. Have to choose your university and major. Personally, I'm always reaching out for the stars because why not? You are already spending money, time and effort in something. And why don't you choose the best thing? I mean, the university that I studied in was not the best one in the world, but it was the best one in my country because this is my personality. I can spend time and energy and put effort in something only if it excites me and I'm getting excited when I'm pushing the limits when I'm forced to get out of my comfort zone and actually this is how I'm widening my own comfort zone because this is how I'm preparing for the new things that I will be facing if you want to study law for example why don't you go to the best university for law I know that not everyone can go to Stanford I know that but if you put as a goal the best university for law, let's say that you're putting as a goal to study in Stanford University, you will see that even if you don't get to your dream university, you will see that actually you will end up as close to your goal as possible. You will end up in one of the best universities for law, which means that you will have a great return on investment. And once you accomplish something that really pushes your limits, you will feel unstoppable and you will be putting higher and higher and higher goals for yourself. And this is how you will find a formula for the success. You will prove yourself that success is nothing but hard work, consistency and passion. If you're not sure what you really want to study, you can use this method. Just close your eyes and imagine that you already have what you want. You are satisfied in a materialistic plan, in a spiritual plan, and you already have what you want. It is your dream life. I mean, you don't have to prove anything to anyone, even to yourself. You are financially independent. What is that thing that you will keep doing because you really like it? Don't forget that your purpose in this life is not something that you really like doing but it is something that you cannot stop doing also let's not talk about the university that you're going to study in but let's talk about the countries as well as this country is more developed than yours will you be able to create a network that will work for you later and also are you from a extremely different culture and will you be able to merge with the crowd also what can you learn from the culture of this country all right you guys so this is gonna be it for today's video 
I might seem a little tired in today's video. There's been a lot going on lately. There's been a lot of snow in Chicago. I've just been juggling so many things at the same time. But yeah, I am very, very happy that I got a chance to sit down and to film this video for you guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in my next one.